Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 3 that as a Christian, you should always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Ultimately, the question is, why do you believe what you believe, and can you defend that belief? Hey, I know that God is real because I feel him in my heart. Why do you believe it, or how do you know that it's true? I don't need to worry about things like that. Like When it comes to the Christian faith, I've adopted the mentality that faith triumphs over facts. As long as I believe it, then it's true for me, bro. We have not been given a blind faith that is purely subjective and unverifiable. It's not a faith that says, don't ask any questions, and don't use your reason or your knowledge, just believe. Because there's actually a basis to our faith and a basis to what we believe. So Christians, especially during the Reformation, saw faith as consisting of three things. One is knowledge, second is assent, and third is trust. I have no idea the graphics going to match where I'm pointing. But knowledge for a Christian comes from God and what he chooses to reveal to us. See, Proverbs 2.6 says that for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. This knowledge is objective truth. So whether or not a person understands it, whether or not a person believes it, it doesn't change the fact of whether or not it's true. It's either true or it isn't. So where God speaks there's no wiggle room for us. With God's revelation of this knowledge, then, there is assent. Now, assent means that we recognize that God's word is truth, and we believe it. How can we do that if faith doesn't come from us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. You're right. At least not without the work of the Holy Spirit, who, who brings us into a relationship with God in Christ. We don't have the ability to believe in Christ all on our own. Do you remember studying Luther's small catechism? Yeah, right. So there's that part that says, I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified me in the true faith. So with the knowledge, that is something completely objective outside of ourselves. It's true whether we believe it or not. But with the assent, means we agree that that's the truth. We, we understand that it is true, that we, that we believe it because God has given it to us and because he's ultimately given us faith to believe it. But then there's the trust. And then this is something that we continue to struggle with, even as Christians in our daily lives, to trust in God, to trust that his word is true, to trust that he is taking care of us, to trust that we are in a relationship with him. And if it weren't for the ongoing nurturing of the Holy Spirit in our lives through word and sacrament, through the, you know, the, the gifts that he's given to us through baptism or through you know, the, the continual communing with Christ through the Lord's Supper or the gathering together in worship with all of God's people, I mean, that, that trust would, would wear pretty thin pretty quickly. Right on, bro. Now, in the final words of his second epistle, Peter, Peter cautions and encourages you, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity.